Episode eight, and I'm wearing my pink. Is it eight or is it nine? It's eight. Eight. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Just keeping track. I know. I Just like the pink. Making sure. I make the pink. <laughs> so, um, we're going to share with you guys this really cool um, thing that we're doing New with news. New uh, news. Yep. Uh, Alaska Medical Transport. And so Charlie came up with this concept of a, an awareness vehicle and brought it to me and was like, hey, we're getting ready to change over our chassis. And so therefore, it's an opportunity to um, reduce some of our decaling. It's a clean and, state. Yeah. And so what do you think about an awareness vehicle? And so um, you want to share like how we came up with this awareness, like what awareness we chose and why and sure. and all so, that you did to get us there. You know, um, a while back, uh, Jason Dolph with Anchorage Fire Department, he was a captain and uh, he was uh, trying to bring up um, an idea to do awareness for breast cancer and for cancer. And uh, with Anchorage Fire Department, he was running a little bit shy of uh, funding for uh, doing Miss Linda and Miss Linda was his mother. And he wanted to do a tribute to her and breast cancer and cancer in itself uh, to do it. And he was running short of funds because AFD was going to pay to do it, you know, because it's muni funds and the public. So this is something that had to be done by donors. And so we were very lucky to get Paul Landis involved from GCI. And Paul really took it under his wing and was able to, uh, to uh, make up the difference between what they needed to uh, take the fire truck, take it out of service, and then be able to wrap it in completely pink and, and dedicated to breast cancer. So I was thinking to myself, so I called Jason about it and told him, hey, you know, I got this idea that I want to kind of do a breast cancer ambulance and it hasn't been really done here and, you know, how he'd feel about it. And he thought it was a great idea. And so he put me in touch with the, uh, the lady that runs the cancer society here that he worked with. And so I brought it to Athena and part of our team and, you know, got her blessing first and talked about well, it. Well, we were just kind of riffing because like, I don't know about any of you other ladies that are listening, but when your husband wants to do something that is like honoring, especially honoring something that affects so much of our community and just bringing awareness, it's just like, oh, you want to help more people. I love it. So, well, you know, and, and one thing that we looked at is like, we have the right to be able to make this kind of how we want to and do it. And we have these, you know, everybody's, we're very known for our beautiful black rigs. And yeah. of course our ambulances are black, you know, because we want to be our style of there. And, you know, a lot of companies are switching to multicolors with black involved. And so we kind of did the black with our themes and our, we have really good emblems and we've been told we have some of the nicest ambulance in the state. Nice and looking, so, yes. yeah, nice looking. And so we're doing it. So I thought to myself, I came up with this, uh, concept. So I called Skyline, which is our, our uh, Lucas over at Skyline uh, things and asked him to kind of make me a mock-up of what one would look like. And he had one of our previous ambulances that we did a new one on. And um, it, he's not going to wrap it. He's going to actually just put vinyl lettering over it. We're painting the entire, uh, the new chassis are brand new. So they're 2024 chassis and they're black and beautiful. And so we're going to go ahead and change out the boxes on them. We had those wrapped at one time, but they're kind of peeling up and they've, it's time for a redo or a refresh. So we're going yeah. so to refresh them. So we came up with a great concept and so we have a beautiful looking design. And so what we're going to do is kind of cool is I was trying to say, how can we really raise funds for this too and, and make it uh, more of a, a donation that we can give to the cancer society too. So yeah. we're going to put, you know, the big ribbons that go, the, the, the beautiful uh, what pink ribbons that you put on there. We're going to put a couple big ones on the sides of the ambulances and we're going to sell names to be able to put on those. And they're going to, get printed once we get all the names are going to get printed at one time with the ribbon and we're going to sell it and we're hoping to raise at least five thousand dollars in funding for it and then alaska medical transport through us is going to match those funds yeah the funds that we receive so really up what to five thousand dollars so if we raise ten thousand even better because then we get more money for the cancer association but we've set a thing of doing this that we'll we'll, we'll match it up to five thousand dollars and so and what i love about this idea is it's it, it has generosity wrapped in it. It has community wrapped in it because awareness. It, it has awareness wrapped in it. Yeah. And it's like this beacon of awareness everywhere we go with that particular ambulance. And then you put a cherry on top because we decided to um, honor our dear cousin, Michelle, who, yes. who just recovered from this, this plight last year. And, um, and so we're, we're going call to it Miss Michelle. Miss Michelle. 
Yeah. So there's the Miss Linda uh, that was honored through Jason Dahl's mom. How long ago was that? Jeez, that, was that was like a, a long ago. time ago. It was probably seven or eight years ago. And I, they've redone another one since then. Mm, okay. um, and they've taken that one out of service because it was an older rig. I think it still might be a reserve, but they have another one now. And I'm, I'm not sure what the new one's name, but I saw it at Station 9 today and they were doing a pump test on it. So I saw it today and even maybe more of it. So um, yeah, it's going to be a fun thing. It's going to be a, a good deal. And I think it's going to be well received. And the cancer association is very appreciative of any donations they get and how they can do it. And hopefully we'll have it in some of the events who are coming up in here yeah. in uh, breast cancer week. And then we'll, we'll have some more medics. We're actually going to get some t-shirts and sweatshirts that are going to be all pink and the crew's working. It can wear those ones too. And just, you know, just kind of honor that side. So, um, we have two more rigs that we're going to be doing too. So we're, we might do one, another tribute to something else, you know, and because we can, it, it, the nice thing about it is that we can we really get to pick, we get to pick and it's not like a municipality ambulance, you know, yeah. we're privatized and we work with the muni very well. They're part of our partners and, but we get to pick what it is. And so we can kind of make it cool. So in the beginning, we're really wanting to brand our name and we're still going to have our names on it. And we're going to have our emblems It'll have on AMT it. and the logo yeah. on there. It'd just be different. So maybe yes. we'll get a military one that we'll do next and honor all of our different military folks that we do stuff with, or, you know, we might dedicate it to something else. So if you guys have any ideas, you can let us know too, what you think might be kind of cool for our state, you know, because we want to, we want to make them the fun ones. You know, and Charlie, you really hit it right on the nose there is that we get to do things that other people wouldn't otherwise get to do because we get to decide. Yeah. And I think that that's something that's really refreshing about working at BAC, especially on the leadership team, is uh, if you're coming from a, a space where you're not given creativity or flexibility within some of that decisions, like coming from government, for instance, one of the things that our, our previous EMS director, he was like, man, in order to get a decision like made, Carney. it would have had a committee and it would have taken months and months and months. And yeah, he was talking about the iPads and the laptops. And yeah, it's just like, yeah, the it sound, makes sense. Let's just do it. And he's like, that's it. I don't yeah. have to like write a report. And I'm like, no. nope, we're just going to order them. You know, and, and, and we've really evolved in EMT too. I mean, it's really gone into, now we got IV pumps that we're doing IVs in and then we have all of our narcotics and drugs. And then, you know, we have a uh, Hamilton ventilators coming in now. So we'll be able to vent patients and, you know, we got Lucas's is coming in now. So it's really coming more full yeah, school. Our into, full capability as an ALS ambulance to meet all sorts of transport needs is really coming into its own. And hands off to Dr. Dow and Dr. Cadigan, our two yeah. medical physicians that work at regional hospital. And they've been super great and so supportive. And, you know, they, <clears throat> I love it. They, they give us enough for us to do our jobs and, and try to increase us. And if we try to maybe do something a little bit, maybe outside of our scopes or think that we ask, we always ask for permission on that. That's yes. one of the biggest things that we always do is like, we want to make sure that we're doing well. And, you know, they'll guide us back in sometimes. Hey, maybe this is not where we should be at right now, but it's not, looks like too far off in the near future we can do this, but let's, let's get this, let's get this part the done. space done. Yeah. And then once we, we have some time there, then we'll move into we this can move other the next space. One. So it's a great partnership with yeah. both those guys and they both keep us in very well and both great doctors and we can talk to them anytime. And you know, really we've been appreciate very, their appreciate mindset. It. Yes. And when I was on Gerber Fire Department too, and we both were, Dr. Cadigan was our doctor there too. So we already had some previous relationship with him. So it made it real nice to have somebody that we already knew. Yes. And in their mindset around just growing EMS and EMS capabilities within our region is part of that. It's like being in alignment with others who our goal is to just do a good job and to provide this community service that we know our community needs. And uh, we can't do it for free because we have payroll and all these other things. We but are a for-profit company. We're not a nonprofit. <laughs> it's true. However, we're coming from this space of we're really here to serve. Yes. And um, there's absolutely uh, nothing wrong with being able to have your lifestyle and also serve at the same time. Yes. So and we're uh, fortunate. I mean, Block has been around 24 years now. So yep. BAC has been around 24 years now and, and it is the... It is the backbone of our other companies that we do it. I mean, when I say that, it is the uh, it's the most established. It's been the longest. It uh, it, it employs the most people, and uh, we've been very lucky, and it's been very successful. And we've had great team members, so we're able to a little bit give back. And you know, when we yes. let other communities take EMS classes with us, and we don't charge them, and we you know come in there and we make sure we feed them, and we take care of them, and you know, there's a lot of uh, community effort that's done in that. And, you know, we want to make sure that we're we're furthering it all the way from Cordova to Hope. Uh, to Girdwood, to other places that we want to really be partners with and help them and their EMS. 
And, you know, you're absolutely right. It's because of the work and the groundwork and the time and the investment that we have put into BAC that we are able to be generous in all of these other areas. And um, that is something to be truly grateful for. Yeah. And I'm really excited about Miss Michelle because I love the fact that we're going to have a pink ambulance because I love shirt. pink. Her, show your um, purse. Show your purse. Uh, it's a reddish yeah. pink. <laughs> um, but her gun gets the, pink on the it. <laughs> other the other bigger piece is, is that I love everything that this ambulance represents: the awareness, the community, the connection, generosity, and then also I'm really looking forward to seeing how can we use this as a sounding board to support this cause. And to also bring a bring awareness to like how important event medics are. Yes, you know, and the event medics say that's going to be a whole other a whole other thing that we're doing right now. We're doing our first MMA fights uh, coming up here in uh, this next month, and uh, we're going to be the we're going to have a paramedic and EMT or EMT three, and then yeah. we're going to be providing medics uh, for that, and we're going to be looking at providing medics for races, and we're going to be doing it for football games and we're going to be doing it. We've already done it for rodeos. And so we're really uh, going to put ourselves out there as event medics too. So um, we have more ambulances than pretty much anybody else does. Right now we're sitting at seven ambulances and four of them are going to be pretty much brand new. And so it's nice to be able to have um, good medics and good people there. We've uh, really employed a, quite a bit of military medics now. So we got a lot of paramedics from the military yes. and that's we have been really great. Up on Roy the has been excellent in 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 helping us uh, uh, acquire some medics from the military, and these guys are great paramedics. And now we're doing more ALS runs to Seward. Um, sometimes our our partners uh, with Guardian and, and Life Med sometimes they're unable to fly to Seward and go get these critical patients uh, yeah. because of their low overhead and and uh, clouds and weather coming in there. So um, we get called to all hours of the night to go down and pick up ground transportation for critical patients yeah. that need to come into more definitive care, like. Uh, regional hospital, life med, I mean, uh, excuse me, Providence, Providence hospital or AMC or even military. Uh, these guys need more definitive care and Providence does a great job in stabilizing the patients, but sometimes they just need somebody to get out of there because they need more help and uh, they're limited in their, uh, their skills there and how much, how much room they really have in the hospital. I, I didn't realize until we went down there, Roy and myself and they have a trauma one, a trauma two, and they have three or four other extra rooms to be able to put patients. But that's they it. Get a, yeah, they, they, they have, and they have three or four rooms to do extended care for a day or two. But past that, they need to get them cut loose out of there so they can open those rooms back up for the community of Seward. And, you know, with all the cruise ships that come in and everything else that comes Visitors. in there and all the fishing people and everything else there, it's a very, very busy season in there for them. So they're stabilizing the patients as good as possible and then calling us and we're going down and picking them up. So. We're getting some more rooms from Matt Sue now, and you know we're working with Kenai and hopefully Homer and then Valdez, and we're just going to be more of the ground ambulance side and then uh, the event side too. You know, uh, doing special events. There's Red Bull that comes up here and other places that need medics for <coughs> standbys because they're doing stunts or they're doing something like that. So yeah, we're going to be able I, to. I was going to ask you, why would an event need a medic? Well, I mean, <coughs> like you take Red Bull when they came up here, they needed medics because they needed. They were doing stunts and they were doing jumps and they were doing all this stuff. So, you know, their, their first immediate care is make sure they have somebody there on sign to stabilize the patient and to be able to give a heads up. And then we always call the local 911s and have them uh, intervene with us, but at least we can stabilize and get the patient into a way that, you know, if they're, they lose their airway or something like that, we can regain their airways. Or if uh, they have to do spinal immobilization, we can do that and make sure that they're going to be prepped and ready to go for when uh, 911 gets there. And if we have to, and some of these ones that outside the city of Anchorage, we can actually do the transports for them too. So, it's going to be really helpful for them. And then having an ambulance there, you know, differently than us and some of the other ones here in town that do it is we actually have a mobile, we have an MCI, we have a mobile intensive care provider. We have a medic unit so we can actually take those guys and put them in the back of our rigs where we have uh, bigger O2 tanks. We have areas yeah. that we can do suctions. We have airships, not taking everything to the, the patient in the scene where they're out in the public. We can actually take them in the back of the rig and stabilize the patients. And if we had to do any other life-saving devices and put Lucas's on them or, uh, you know, um, doing IVs on them or getting them drugs, or it's in a stable area where we're able to work on the patient, where we have all of our tools right there out of us. We're not sitting on the ground trying to work on a patient. Yeah. And so the, the idea here is that we're not two medics in a tent. No. We're, um, we're two medics with ALS capabilities if it's required or requested in an ambulance with wheels. Yeah. And, and the nice thing about that is we might have a tent there too, but we'll have the ambulance rig there also. We'll have a facility where people can walk up to us and talk to us. But if we need to pull somebody personally into something, something's happening to them that we can 
do it outside the public eye. You know, we can yes. actually put them in a place and, and make them feel secure and, and, and be able to have, have them some in privacy a, around yeah. that. Yes. And, you know, you never know whether an Alaska is going to do so uh, keeping That's their true. temperatures right and, and keeping them there and, you know, getting them comfortable and, you know, where they can, we can uh, really work with the patient and help them. And I feel like that's the next level of this event medic idea is yes. that um, oftentimes when you think of event medics is you're thinking of somebody who's manning the first aid tent and that's it. And a lot of most of those places are BLS too. They're basic life support. So, and which is, you know, 90% of what the calls are. I mean, a lot of that stuff is a BLS calls that we yeah. have that somebody's hurt their finger or they sprained their ankle or leg and we just got to do some, uh, some minor things to help them. But when you have somebody that's a critical patient and doing that and be able to have the life packs, be able to have uh, zoles there, be able to have uh, interventions that we can do that really help them. That's going to be the, the key thing for the first three or four minutes or five minutes until we get more ALS there yeah. that we have to, and then getting extra team members there to help. And I mean, just as a business owner, if, if we were hosting an event that had a bunch of people there and um, I just think of the liability sure. of like, wow, like this is because we have special insurance that we carry uh, uh, for Alaska Medical Transport that that is professional insurance that that protects whoever we would hire from um, anything yeah. because it's 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 insurance for the medics yeah while they're practicing it's for our skills it's our yes. skill levels and things that we're doing in there and our doctors pack all that skill level so i mean you have a doctor backing us all in that stuff you know um on ent ones you don't need doctors to back you you don't need a physician sponsor to say hey these guys can do this different ems skills because they're ones they're they're, they're they just don't running. have any really <coughs> capabilities other than like the first aid and make, administering oh, oxygen, oxygen and yeah. glucose yeah, glucose stuff the small stuff they can do but now as as twos threes and peas i mean our ivs and dehydration and things like yeah. that to get them up there you know when you're having races for runs you're gonna have a lot of people are dehydrated you might have some people who are severely cramped you might have an asthmatic thing where you have to low do some, blood sugar issues yeah we we can do all that stuff in the layer and be able to do the intervention on on them uh, until, like I said, if it's in the Anchorage Bull area, until we get more uh, ALS or more help from the fire department, but we can be that first person to be able to interact with that. And it makes a big difference. I mean, uh, very big. Well, and if you can imagine um, even being willing to go into remote areas or, yeah. or more remote areas outside of like the main cities and boroughs. We're really looking forward to that. So yeah. um, if you're looking towards, uh, you have some camps that you need medics at and you need things like that, we'll be able to mobilize and be able to take equipment out to the camps and be able to have extra oxygen out there, extra drugs, extra things up there. Because yeah. when you're having a logging site or you're having something that's a remote medics for oil or exploration and stuff like that, there's a there's a lot of companies doing it. But um, if it's on the roadway, we can actually bring an ambulance and bring a rig up there. The North Slope, I mean, we've been approached several times in the North Slope for putting medics up there and how we can do that and our new ambulances and you know there's a lot of remote sites that are out there that they need help and they have the you know what's usually security guard emts and those guys are great too we've had a lot of them but they're work with emt us. ones no there's some of them are twos and threes also oh. but um the remoteness for them is out there and you have to have people really trained in the remote medic and having those guys because a lot of people are used to just having that rig right next to them so we want to make sure that they get the best quality people forestry that's another thing that we're chasing after too is the forestry working with the forest medics and be able to have medics out there to help support um, our wildland firefighters so we have a lot of a lot of good things coming up with the ems side of it and you know we're just excited about it yeah miss linda is gonna be really cool guys and when you guys see this on the road miss michelle miss michelle sorry miss linda is the fire truck miss michelle yeah. so um, that's going to be pretty exciting. When you see it, you guys will have to put some posts on there and take some pictures yes. and put it on our page and let us know, you know, because we, we really want to make sure the awareness I want to get back to is, uh, when we got uh, GCI involved in this and Paul was so kind about helping with this with AFD for Miss Linda, yeah. um, <clears throat> that they had actually one of the reporters from their TV stations that they owned at the time do a story on it. And, uh, it ended up like one of them, um, that was in the management team or what else saw it or was part of it and was having a little bit of issues and problems and he went and got checked. And one of the stories Paul tells me that he just really homed in on him is that it's just not females or anything else. This was a male person. This was a person that was having some problems and he went and got checked and he got it done in time that it wasn't. Uh, so was there like a, a lump in his breast or I'm like not a sure if his chest or if it was in his colon or whatever else it might have been. It was but an ins I, but he got checked. He got checked and they found something and they, they found it early enough to be able to remove it and, and then now being cancer free. And of course, you know, that's rechecking yeah. up all the time on there, but you know, this video or the, uh, the interactions with GCI doing this and doing the press on it and helping with it and doing the interview on it made this gentleman 
uh, realized that he probably should go get checked because he got to hear from the people that were doing it on the the cancer side of it and saying how important it is to check. And he, I think he mentioned it to one of the people and they said, you should come in for a check. And then he found something. And so um, he ended up taking some time off of work, had had some surgeries done, but it was a, uh, it it's was remarkable, very successful. Though. Yeah. And, and if, if it wouldn't have been for this and it wouldn't have been for us trying to get them involved with it, and it wouldn't have been for Jason reaching out to me, which we always think things happen for a reason that this person uh, might've been diagnosed late into it or might've had more issues down the line. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to tell one way or another, but we do know that he did it because of uh, Miss Linda. And so we're hoping to do the same thing with Miss Michelle is that we are going to put awareness on the back of the rigs where we have the yeah. Chevron striping. It'll be pink and white and there'll be some sayings back there. Like, you know, definitely get yourself checked out. Look at, you know, what just reminders, just, yeah. And, you know, we get so many people that sit behind it and they're going to sink all the pink and the white and all the colors. It's going to be pretty that they're going to look at that. And it might just, I mean, if it just changes one person, then we did our job. You know, and that's the whole piece around the awareness is yeah. it's like um, it, it touches more of the people than we really think. Like we know if, if we took inventory of how many women and not so much men, but it, it does happen for men and yes. women. Um, but if I just took, wrote a list of all the women that I know that are cancer survivors as a result. Your Tata club. I mean, um, you yeah. A few people in so your Tata club. It's like, it is something that is, is just prevalent and, and we just don't, we just can't bring more, we need to bring more awareness to this kind of thing. So I'm hoping this will. I, and I am really hoping that people, look at it is that we're doing it because we want to be community oriented. We want to be uh, letting people remind to get checked and, and see. Well, and I love the idea around making those ribbons, these ribbons of honoring. Yes. These memories of either people that are survivors or, or that have people that have passed as a result. And so it's like this memorial on top of this awareness and then, um, and so I, I love that piece. And please understand, we are going to charge and put the names on there, but we 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 benefit from that nothing uh, it, it, besides giving that to the cancer association. And everybody's name will be on there, and there'll be a, a, a will be a dedication to it. So you're going to see some fairly quickly here in this next week or two. Um, you're going to see some advertisements about the different names that we can put on there and what, how we're going to do it. And it'll well, be on there for quite some time as, as long as the wrap holds up and everything else like that does until we do redesign it. And I imagine at least a minimum of three years, but um, we really want to uh, sell those names. And so if you have an honored one that has had cancer and you want to honor their name and put it on there, or if you have a loved one that you has passed because of cancer, um, you're more than welcome to put that on there too. And I mean, I think the minimum is going to be what $150 to put the name on the, uh, on the ribbon. And um, we want to make it like a, 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 a memorial yes. uh, for living and for people that have passed where they can put the names on there and basically one day maybe go take a picture with it, like a wall, like uh, like a, a wall for veterans or whatever else it might be. It's, in a, there. Memorial. Yeah, it's, it's a memorial. It's a memorial for people that have been loved and um, that are loved. And, and really, I mean, I think it's really important to understand that this is just a, an opportunity for the community to join us in generosity. Yeah. And I, I think it'll go really well. I mean, we've talked to a lot of people and everybody wants to buy names already. So please get in there so you can get in there because uh, yes. we really want to make sure that, you know, your loved one or your person that you really want to honor or do something and gets a chance to put that name on there. And it's a very small price. You're more than welcome to put any more money past the $150 into it because Absolutely. you know where it's going to come to. And it's going to go right to the cancer association. So of course, you know, it's going to be a, a 501c3 that you can write it off and you can do it through your business or you can do it through your personal. But, <clears throat> and if you want to put your business name on it, that you're a supporter of it, you know, if you wanted to put down that you're a supporter of this and that you support this association, we'd put your name on there too. We really want to keep it to names of people too, um, just so it has a personal touch to it. Yes, yes. But businesses are welcome to too. I mean, we'll put your names on there because it, all the money is going to go to a great cause and that's what yes. we're looking for. That's that's the biggest thing. And like I said, uh, AMT is going to match it up to $5,000 on there too. Um, this will be a fresh new look on a brand new ambulance. It'll be ceramic coated afterwards. It'll look nice and bright and pretty and we'll use it for events and different things. So your names will be seen. And um, this is not just an opportunity for individuals. This is a business opportunity. If there's other businesses in the community that are wanting to help match some of these funds up to a certain dollar amount, like we would welcome that. Like we want this to be this like beautiful wrapped hug that we give to the cancer association so that they have um, 
they have this wonderful donation check at the yeah. end of it. And um, so we're welcoming everyone who wants to get involved in this project, and including inviting Miss Michelle to your workplace. Yeah. We would love to spread awareness. And we were talking with the Cancer Association on some of the events that they host that we would be bringing Miss Michelle to. But this isn't just AMT's ambulance. This is our community ambulance. And, and we are really all in on spreading the awareness. Now, of course, you know, we have calls, but we, you know, if we get a call, we might have to leave and go, but we'll come back. It's, it's good for picnics and barbecues and things like yes. that just to get the awareness out. So, yes. and then, you know, we've talked to some of our other partners and friends that we've done it and one of our towing companies, uh, I'll say it just Charlie's inspiring Vulcan, other employee or Vulcan employers. Towing's yes. got a couple black trucks coming up that are going to be their brand new tow trucks. And they think it's a great idea that we might do it too. So we're hopefully uh, spread the weird for other companies to do it. If you have a company and yours is a very well seen truck or a vehicle or a van or something like that. Can you imagine having 20 or 30 of these vehicles just running around town supporting that? I mean, that would just be so yes. huge because the message would get out there bigger and bigger every day. And it would be a, a billboard that would go by or whatever else it is. Make sure you're a good driver because you'll get called in. So, Well, you know, it's not just that. Is It's like everyone has something in their heart that is specific to a cause or that touches their heart in a way that um, they want to build more awareness around. Sure. And so you could just imagine if business owners kind of picked up this idea of having an awareness vehicle or, or, or bringing awareness and then spurring on generosity through donations. And um, could you just imagine how much funds could be raised for all of these different causes that are just doing good in the world? Yeah, it would, you're still, it would be amazing. You're, you're still advertising your business. You're still doing your jobs, but you're just helping out another organization yeah. in, in a, um, a simple wrap or a simple of putting something on there that would help it. You know, I mean, it would just... It, and it, encouraging it's not hard to, generosity and donations <coughs> around that. Yeah. All of us have friends that'll help. Yeah. Everybody has a friend that will help. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think one of the most important things that I learned from this experience was that when you go to that particular organization, they already have kind of like this like marketing plan on, on how to get from the start to the end. And I'm not necessarily saying that they're going to be able to help you with who does raps in your city. But they'll they'll kind of be able to walk you through, well, this is, this is what like a commence a commencement ceremony could look like. And then we'll do a press release to like build more awareness around it. And then we can have like a ribbon cutting or something like that when we're presenting the check. Like they will help you orchestrate all of this because this is part of what they do is they spread awareness about their cause. You know, and this might wrap into Bach too that we end up maybe making one of our buses into a set of the gold emblems. So we put pink emblems on it and we we honor that to the association. It won't be as probably as loud as a wrap. Uh, when I say loud as much we as we have that more flexibility Alaska with the Medical ambulance Transport. because yeah. we're not an executive service. Yeah. And you know, the, one of the things about the ambulance service is one of the big things that we do is we take people to radiation and cancer and to therapies uh, quite often and from the hospitals because yeah. they, some of the hospitals don't have that in their hospital. So we have to pick them up and take them to their appointments to and from. So how honoring is that for the patient that gets in there that we're honoring them to be in our ambulance yeah. too. So there, there's some other things around it. And I think some other businesses can help from it. And, you know, the transportation companies and all the way down the ambulance is all the way down to roofers or, or plumbing companies, whatever really else it is. Yeah, it's really endless. Yeah, it's endless. endless to the possibilities. You can wrap your emblems all over it and make them pink and dedicate it to somebody. And, you know, you might have a family member or somebody else or a coworker or somebody else that might have been going through this. And this is a good way that you can honor them. You know, and it's not just um, cancer awareness. There's some people where Alzheimer's yes. touches them or... Special needs, anybody yes, else. Yeah, yes, It, it could be absolutely. anything that you feel that you feel passionate. I was on yes. the board of Challenge Alaska for quite some time and we helped a lot with that. And, you know, those are, that's a, just a very passionate group that, you know, really uh, does a lot of good for the community. So it could be whatever you decide you want your company to support, but you should support one of them. And then you should put that on your, your page that you support them and, and be a supporter of them and then work with them. Yeah. And, you know, something that really resonates with me in this, like the way that we choose to lead through the community, through our business, is that um, we have over 200 people that BAC interacts with on a weekly basis because we have team members. And so we're an example to them on, on how we operate within the community. And this is just, it's not just inspiring 
other businesses or inspiring, um, you know, Joe and Susie homeowner. It's like the impact that we make every single day on the team that is in proximity to us when we make these decisions about building awareness and and championing generosity and putting others in, in this space of um, honoring them. And so this is more, this rings all these bells for me, this project. Well, you know, and even our employees are super psyched about it. They think it's a great idea. You know, we've had some employees that are medics and some other people that have had uh, struggles with different things that they've had to in their lives. And some of this might be the same thing that we're supporting, but those people think it's awesome. And, you know, they're proud to tell their loved ones or friends or others that we're supporting those things too. So, you know, it's, it's a, it gives them a feel good thing too, that their company yeah. and the people that they're working for or working with or teaming up with that are part of that. So I think we'll get some good, uh, I think we'll get some really good positive energy off this. I, I would agree with you. And, and put and, off positive energy. And there will be, um, so many opportunities, especially on Facebook and on Instagram yeah. to just read and understand about how to, how you can get, get in on contributing or, um, all of the different pa uh, pages and posts that will happen around Miss Michelle. And you know, there was a few comments that we made about this is happening in a few weeks. And for a lot of you, you probably don't realize, but we do film these podcasts in advance so that we're prepared. And so this is going to be happening at, um, around the end of May. And so for those of you who are a little confused about how we were explaining it, like the, the, this particular, the, all of these event happenings are going to be in that, in that space. Yeah. We're excited. Yes, we are. And we're really excited about, um, the listeners that are, are coming in and, and just kind of like hearing some of the ideas and some of the things that Charlie and I kick around and the opportunity to really just encourage others and to lift them up into this raise up mindset that we live in day in and day out. Yeah. And um, so thank you for joining us on yeah. this uh, episode eight and learning about Miss Michelle and our event medics and, and how grateful we are to be a part of all of these little things that we get to do. You know, one of the things we want to ask you too is if you guys have any questions or is anything that we can help you that you think that we might have knowledge that you might need help in your business or something you're asking questions for. So yep. you can always leave a comment on there and ask us if we can uh, comment on something or give you some advice on something or how we did something. So the whole object of this thing is is to create awareness and help people with their companies and their businesses. Absolutely. We were very fortunate to get some help from other people when we were growing up and we want to just return that. Yes. So you could absolutely find the Raise Up podcast on Facebook and Instagram and ask us questions there. And we will be more than happy to answer them at the end of our podcast um, as they come in. So, you know, one of the cool things we're going to be doing too, is we're going to be bringing guests on. So that's another yeah. thing that we're going to be bringing on. We're going to bring some of our partners and some guests and just talk about how our relationships and how our uh, partnerships have really helped us and how we can help them. And We'll have guest speakers, and as we're going through trips, you know, you might see some podcasts us on our yes, trips. Yes, we've got so some stuff planned. We've got some stuff planned, so you might see some interesting. It won't be this this little room. It might be in our motorhome, or it might be on a trip that we're going to talk about what's going on in our life because the work life balance has to happen too, and it's very important with your kids and your wife and your employees and your friends and all that stuff. We have to, you know, everybody works so hard to get where you're at. And all of a sudden you're, you're 50 and then you're 55 and then you're like, I'm okay, I need 55. to start enjoying time. So I'm 55. <laughs> so anyways, I just want to make sure that people know that you have to have that balance in your life. And I'm hoping you're seeing this as a, as a, a helpful hint to how to do it because we didn't know how to do it for a long time. I mean, we, we were always to the grind and now it's like a little bit more like we're more a little bit laid back and things were a little bit, not as serious, you know, it's still serious, but you know, we can, we, we can, can laugh at each other a little more. Yes. Yes. We're not so serious with each other, but really we do want to bring value and, uh, we hope that you've enjoyed this, uh, this episode. So we'll right. see you next time. All right. Bye.